We're in a new series that I'm so excited about. I get the blessed privilege of preaching on the name of Jesus. And so I'm so pumped up about this and uh, looking forward to what God is going to do. Also want you all to pay attention. We're going to be doing some uh, pop-up virtual encounters that will be completely random throughout the evenings of the week. And, um, and these pop-up virtual encounters, I'm going to be talking about some uncomfortable subjects that I'll be preaching on. One of them that is uncomfortable and shouldn't be uncomfortable is HIV prevention. The saints love having sex, but don't want to talk about HIV prevention. Ah! Oh, Jesus. You better know it. I sure am. I'm in partnership with a national program, and um, I've taken on this task to do this. And so I'm going to be on at least twice a week having uncomfortable conversations. Oh, don't you love him? I'm talking about Jesus. Don't you love him? Speaking of talking about Jesus, we're in a series called The Jesus Series. And we're excited about what God is doing. Uh, I'm going to get into this today. I want you to put your thinking cap on. Last week I taught on Jesus, and I think it just... I don't know if I put everybody into a theological coma. I don't know. They were like, Bishop. <laughs> oh my God, Bishop. <laughs> I can't take no more. <laughs> okay, so listen. I want you to be so full of Jesus till you overflow. I want you to get excited about Jesus again. I want you to love Jesus. I want you to eat, sleep, and drink Jesus. I want you to live Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noonday, Jesus in the evening. Tell your neighbor, say, it was nobody but Jesus. Okay. So we're in the Jesus series. And I'm hoping I provoke some of you all to go deeper in the things of God. And uh, if time permits, um, I'm on time. If time permits, we may pray some people through to the Holy Ghost. Like we did last week. We had four people to get filled with the Holy Ghost last week, y'all. Four people got filled with the Holy Ghost. Sister Jackie Stan. She was one of the ones that got filled with the Holy Ghost last week. And you know how the old saint said, she got it and she got it good. She left the church drunk in the spirit. Anybody remember those days where somebody had to drive you home because the Holy Ghost had knocked you out? Somebody said, I want the Holy Ghost like that. I want the Holy Ghost to where I have to stop being a liar. I want the Holy Ghost to where I got to apologize to people. I want the Holy Ghost to where I feel guilty if I don't treat you right. I want the type of Holy Ghost that'll make me apologize even when I don't think I'm wrong. Somebody said, that's the kind of Holy Ghost I got. And I got news for you. If you don't got it like that, you're a liar. You're a thief and a robber. Because real Holy Ghost folk don't mistreat people. Real Holy Ghost people, listen, they're convicted. Don't speak in tongues and then cuss me out in English and mistreat me. Y'all speak in tongues and don't say hey in English. And you think that's holy. Mean as a rattlesnake. How did the Holy Ghost get in your feet? How did the Holy Ghost get in your feet and bypass your heart? That's illegal to me. If the heart is the doorway into your life, how did the Holy Ghost get in your tongue but didn't get in your heart? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking.
Let's go to the scripture, Acts 4 and 12. Because I done made them mad already. Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. One of my favorite scriptures. I feel good all on the inside. Minister Jimmy, somebody get her a mic. I want you to also get me Acts chapter 2, verses 37 through 39. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. Acts chapter 2, verse 37 to 30. I'm going to read Acts chapter 4 and 12, and then I'm going to let you read Acts 2, 37 through 39. Acts 4 and 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other. Somebody say, Any other. Not in Buddha. Not in Confucius. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Not might be, must be saved. Amen. Acts chapter 2, verses 37 through 39, what does it say? chapter 2 37 through 39 the international version and it reads as thus when the people heard this they were cut up let me start over when the people heard this they were cut to the heart and said to peter and the other apostles brother what shall we do Peter replied repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for forgiveness of sin and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The promise is for you and your children. And for who are all for all. Let's give her a better mic. Awesome. All right, let's try that again. I want everybody to hear this. Acts 2, 37 through 39. What does it say? When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brother, what shall we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and for who all are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. I want to preach from the subject, it ain't the same without the name. It ain't the same without the name. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I bless you for your anointing. I thank you for your fire. I thank you for your glory. I thank you that you're in here to heal, deliver, and set free. Spirit of the living God, as I begin to preach this word, let your word go forth like a sword, cutting asunder the, uh, the spirit from the soul. Let people be healed, delivered, and set free. That your name be magnified and your name be glorified in this place. Let the anointing of evangelism hit this house and let the spirit of God begin to move in this place upon the face of the water. And I pray, oh God, that before we leave this place, we're going to leave healed, delivered, and set free by the power and spirit of God. And we will be careful to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise in the strong name of Jesus Christ that we pray. All oh, but we say it is so, and it shall not be otherwise. You may be seated. I want to share this with you. I'm on fire today. I'm on fire because I feel the presence of God all over me. I want to share something with you that I think is extremely important to understand. Nothing in this realm, nothing in this world, this natural physical world. You see this physical world, the chair, everybody around you. This physical world is controlled and moved by an unseen realm. This physical world is controlled and moved by an unseen realm. Everything that happens in the natural must first be permitted, released, and created in the spirit. I'm going to say it again. Everything that happens in the natural must first be released and created in the realm of the spirit. Nothing moves except by the spirit realm. Somebody say nothing. Nothing moves except by the spirit realm. Your healing, your freedom, your next level, your next dimension is completely connected to permission from the realm of the spirit. I want you to hear this and I want you to catch this. Why am I saying that? 
it's important for you to realize that in order for something to come forth, and your neighbor needs to hear this because they can want a counseling session, I'm going to say no. <laughs> I'm saying no. I'm going to say go back on YouTube and watch that video. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Nothing moves except it happens by way of the Spirit, which means, watch this, you need a spiritual permission or authority. Let's get Pastor Stairs to see. Let's make sure Pastor Stairs has somewhere to see. Oh, does he? He doesn't want to say, okay, you're good. Okay, very good. Um, I want to make sure, hey, brother, how you doing? You doing all right? It's good to see you. I love you. <laughs> Nothing moves in this realm except it is permitted in the realm of the spirit, which means you need a higher authority. Somebody say higher authority. higher authority. You need a higher authority in order to experience manifestation, which means that there is some type of spirit being with ranking that gives people spiritual access. That's why you have to be careful with letting everybody lay hands on you. You have to be careful with letting everybody prophesy over you. See, some of y'all let people prophesy over you and you falling all out on the floor. You better stand up and listen to that word. You better hear that whole prophecy and listen to what people are speaking into your life. Stop letting everybody lay hands on you. I'm talking to you, you conference junkie. Stop letting everybody lay hands on you. You're going to everybody conference and going to everybody meeting. And just because that person told you the last four digits of your social security number, you're, oh, this, this must be from God. Do you not know that the enemy knows the last four digits of your social? Don't you know that the devil knows your address? Don't you know that the knows your middle name? Don't you know that psychics and mediums have access into the realm of the spirit? Every access is not legal access. Some people have illegal access into the realm of the spirit. Don't you know some churches are illegal? Don't you know some churches are illegal? And why is that? Because influence cannot be stolen, it must be given. And if you steal influence through the spirit of division, witchcraft, and strife, that is illegal access. If you started a church because you don't like somebody, your church is illegal. If you started a ministry because you refused to submit to the people you were under, your ministry is illegal. If nobody knows that you're anointed other than you, your anointing is illegal. Somebody else has to recognize the call of God on your life and affirm the hand of God in your spirit. You don't have power to pour the oil on yourself. I don't care if you make a Facebook page. I don't care if you get a website. I don't care if you have the best people to take your pictures. Profile pictures don't make you powerful. You need access into the realm of, a, of the spirit. And listen, the spirit, not a spirit. There are many people in the body of Christ that have the wrong zeal and the wrong spirit. And because people don't have discernment, they can't tell the difference between the two. Did God put your marriage together or did Grey Goose do it? Did God put that together with a Savitka? It's quiet in here. I just want the power that I got in this one and this one. If we can get the power in this one. I want you to hear this. You cannot get access to anything except you have permission. Can I share something with you? That's why we must be careful with this new age theology that presents the idea that there are many pathways to God. I know I'm offending some people today. I'm okay. We must be careful because some of you all speak in the Holy Ghost tongues and believe that there are many pathways to God. And that is not true. Somebody say that is not true. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So this is what we have to understand. When you understand the message and the authority of Jesus Christ, it is a message and it is an authority of identity. It is a message of identity. Here is the issue. Many of us don't understand that the identity of Jesus Christ is to reveal, listen here, it is to reveal the potential of man in the earth realm. So if the name of Jesus Christ has been put upon your forehead, if the name of Jesus Christ has been written upon you, then that means that you have the same authority, ability, and access of Jesus in the earth. 
your neighbor don't believe it. And the reason why I know your neighbor don't believe it is because they think unless they baby daddy pay child support that God can't bring them out. And don't you, do you not realize, and you, listen how quiet it is in here, do you not realize that a man cannot do for you what God can do for you? Do you not realize that you have put your whole life on hold because you are waiting on somebody to be something for you that only God can be? Look how quiet it is in this room. Don't you realize that I don't care how many people you connect to, nobody has the ability to grant you access like the name of Jesus. Some things are only going to happen through divine access. You cannot get this next blessing illegally. You're not going to flirt your way into this next listen. You're not going to flirt your way into this next promotion. I tell you the saints don't get it. The, the, listen, the enemy will deceive you. Your whole Instagram look like Popeye's. Two piece of leg and thigh, and you still ain't got nobody. Put some clothes on and get some substance in your spirit. You ain't showing that man nothing he ain't seeing. You not showing that woman nothing she ain't seeing. Why every challenge got you taking your clothes off? And it's the saints doing it. Oh, Lord. Well, Bishop, I don't know why I keep attracting the type of people I keep attracting because of what we keep advertising. I want you to hear this. You must understand that Jesus Christ did not come on the earth to die on the cross. Jesus Christ did not come on the earth to die on the cross. Jesus Christ came upon the earth to show you how you could live life and to live more abundantly. The assignment of Jesus Christ was not to make sure you could make it to heaven. The assignment of Jesus Christ was to make you a portal, a doorway, and an access to heaven. You were to become a portal to heaven, not, listen, spending your entire life trying to make it to heaven. And this is the issue with the body of Christ. We are hoping and praying that we don't go to hell. We are hoping and praying that we can be saved. And the issue that we have realized is that the assignment of Jesus Christ was to give you options in the earth realm. Did you hear what I said? The assignment of Jesus Christ was to give you options in the earth realm. How can you worship a God that believes in abundant life and choose to settle for anything that the enemy gives you? I want you to hear this today. When you understand the assignment of Jesus Christ, and I'm going to give you a history lesson in a moment. The assignment of Jesus Christ in the earth was to show you what your identity was to be. He was not showing off miracles. He was saying, you see what I do? You can do this too. You see what I'm doing? You can do this too. If you begin to walk in authority, you recognize that the name of Jesus Christ, the identity of Jesus Christ, and the authority of Jesus Christ belongs to you. Do you know that there is something called the power of attorney? There is something called the power of attorney that someone can sign over paperwork to you and give you the ability to use their name to gain access to whatever they have. When the Lord gave you the name of Jesus Christ, when he gave you his name, listen to me carefully, he gave you the authority, the identity, and the ability to have access to whatever he has access to. Your neighbor don't believe it. Can I tell you how I know your neighbor doesn't believe it? Because your neighbor would realize, I want you to catch this, that it is not in the title that you have. It is not in who you're connected to. It is in the authority that comes through the name of Jesus Christ. We think being called a bishop makes you powerful. I'm amazed at what people would do to get a license. I'm amazed at what people would do to get ordained. And the truth is, is we ordain you and you don't even do nothing. You get the license and don't do nothing. What is it that you want to do for God? It's quiet in here. What is it that you want to do for God that you cannot do without a license? What is it that you want to do for God that you cannot do without ordination? It's 
It is not the title that you take on in the earth realm, but it is the name of Jesus that gives you access and authority to everything that is in, watch this, heavenly places. Which means when I take on the name of Christ, it gives me the authority to receive what it is I have. Why do we pray in Jesus' name? Why do we say in Jesus' name? Because what we are saying is I've decreed all these things. Now let me put forth what has given me access and authority to have what it is that I say I can have. Because witches pray too. Warlocks pray too. When you put the name of Jesus on your prayer, when you put the name of Jesus on your decree, what you are saying is, I call this forth, I decree this forth, and I speak this as if I'm Jesus Christ. Did you hear what I'm saying? You're saying, I decree this as if I'm Jesus Christ. So I command you to be healed in the name of Jesus. I'm saying I command you to be healed with the same authority that Jesus commanded people to be healed. I command you to be delivered in the name of Jesus. I command you to be delivered. What, what, what you think it is, this is, what you, this is what we think. We're thinking that, God, I'm praying this prayer. Now, Jesus, please come bless this. God, help me in Jesus' name. Please help me, Lord, in Jesus' name. I pray, I beg, I hope, in Jesus' name. Please, the master, if you could just see fit to just come by and just give me a little blessing. Just come by here, Lord, and just touch me just a little bit. Just a touch, Lord, that's it. In Jesus' name, please. No! No! What you are, I wish, Lord, help me. What you are saying is, I'm decreeing this, and this holds the same weight as if Jesus Christ was decreeing this. What I say holds the same weight. Open up your mouth and say, what I say holds the same weight of Jesus Christ. Say, what I decree holds the same authority of Jesus Christ. If you believe that, you wouldn't have to have 10 prayer partners. Oh, come on through here. Let me come down here. I, I get sick of playing church. You think I drove 190 miles to come down here and play church with you? Let me come down here. Because some of y'all, you think I'm talking to everybody but you. You ain't even halfway listening. The devil got you distracted with stuff that don't even matter. Stuff that ain't even important. I know you don't believe it because all behavior is a byproduct of belief. So if you really believe it, eventually your behavior will testify. So if you behave differently from what you say you believe, you really don't believe it. All behavior is a byproduct of belief. So if you believe, if you believe that what you say has the same authority of Jesus Christ, you would not need 20 people to agree with you. The fact that you need 20 people to agree with you, the fact that you need everybody to believe what you say, you need everybody, means that you don't believe that what you say has weight. And I can listen to the way that you pray and tell what your theology is. Let me tell you, listen, I, I know it's going to mess some of us up, but we at the powerhouse. Here's the difference. It's when I point at you and I say, you know, I, I just pray that God heal you. I pray that God deliver you. I pray that God set you free. I just pray that God just, just help you out. That's a toxic theology. Because what does that even mean? I pray. Okay, we didn't do it. Well, I am praying. No, you're not. You're telling me what you're going to do. I'm just waiting for you to do it. I pray the Lord heal you. No, just pray that the Lord heals me. So here's the next level. I command you to, to be healed. I speak healing in your body right now in the name of Jesus. I, I command this sickness to go right now in the name of Jesus. That's the next level. Watch this. The next level beyond that is you're already healed. Take up your bed and walk.
listen, we, we, this, this church is about to move in a whole new direction. This is the season of walking up to the person in the wheelchair and say, get up. Well, you didn't say in Jesus' name. I live in Jesus' name. It wasn't just something to say. It's a state of consciousness and existence. Did you catch that? It's a state of consciousness and existence. So I'm not just saying in Jesus' name. I came over to you in Jesus' name. Everything I just spoke was in Jesus' name. He signed it all. When did he sign it? These works that I do shall you do also and greater works than these because I go to my father. So that means that I'm walking in the same power and authority and lineage of the person, Jesus Christ. Which means when I get into certain realms of prayer, the devil don't know if he's dealing with me or Jesus Christ himself. Did you hear what I just said? I said the devil don't know if he's dealing with you or Jesus Christ himself. Do you not know that the devil gets scared? When you start decreeing and opening up your mouth, don't you know that the devil gets terrified? When you start speaking things out of your mouth, don't you know that the enemy gets afraid? When you open up your mouth and you start commanding certain things to happen, it has nothing to do, listen, to how you decorate what you're saying. Because you think what you're saying is powerful because you're growling. You think that it's powerful because you loud. I'm about to shout and run all over this place. You think that your message is powerful because you're loud. Don't you know that people with real authority can whisper? Listen, don't you know people with real authority can walk into a person with a demon and say, You sitting down there to turn the whole altar into WWE. You're going to come out right now. You, it's, it's, it's Porsche and Kenya Moore at Real Housewives all over again. You done dragged them all across the street. I'm going to drag this devil up out you. I command this devil to come out your hairline, come out your, come out your tracks, come out right now. Come out the lashes. It has nothing to do with it. You ain't got to listen. It's not me. It's God through me speaking to you, commanding everything in your life to come in alignment. Lord, I'm about to... Can I, 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 can I prophesy something real quick? This is for anybody that will receive it. The word of the Lord to you is that today... Let me see who received... Okay, okay. All right, okay. All right, good. The word of the Lord to you is this. Before you leave this place today, every bit of toxic theology that makes you feel unworthy is going to melt off of you. You're going to leave this place so convinced of your authority that nobody is going to be able to betray you. Nobody's going to be able to have any power to cause you to listen, lose your integrity. I'm about to shout. Nobody's going to have the power or the authority to mess up your mind. Nobody's going to have the power to captivate your emotions. In this season, I'm going to be completely and totally unbothered. I'm going to be unbothered. I'm going to be unbothered. They're going to say the bill is due and I'm going to be unbothered. They're going to say we're going to put you out and I'm going to be unbothered. They're going to hand you a pink slip and you're going to be unbothered. Why? Because when you fired me, you fired Jesus. Somebody shout unbothered. Point to three people say this is my unbothered season. I dare somebody to put a praise right there. Because I'm getting ready in this season to walk in supernatural authority. This ain't me saying something and God signs off on it. He approved me when he gave me his spirit. He approved what I said when he gave me the Holy Ghost. So the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead is alive on the inside of me. I want you to catch this. I want you to hear this, Lord help us. So somebody say, how do I take on the name? I need to take on the name of Jesus. Don't you know when you take on the name of Jesus, you can have horrible credit and the Lord will still let you get certain jobs? Don't you know when you take on the name of Jesus, you cannot qualify for the job, but the Lord will still give it to you? Don't you know when the name of Jesus is upon your life? That you can have everything in your past that says you're unworthy and unqualified. 
but because I've taken on a new identity, it doesn't matter what man has to say. It doesn't matter what man will try to do. Somebody say, I got a new identity. Don't you know that there's some people that think that they got control over you because they know who you used to be? Don't you know that there's some people that think that they can stop your next level because they know what you used to do? Just because you know where I've been don't mean you know where I'm going. And if you can see in the realm of the spirit, you might see me in the natural. But in the spirit realm, I look like Jesus. And I've taken on a new identity. Don't you know the name of Jesus can reverse things that's in your bloodline? I don't care if diabetes run in your bloodline. I don't care if sickle cell run in your bloodline. I don't care what runs in your bloodline. If you've got the blood of Jesus, you got a new bloodline, which means you are no longer the. Whoa, wait a minute here. Yeah. You are no longer the person that you used to be. You are no longer the individual that you used to be. Look at your neighbor and say, Look at me. I don't look like what I've been through. Say, But I do look like where I'm going. Listen, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through this old message. I don't think I may have to finish this. I may have to finish this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through this old Because what I feel the Lord doing right now is reversing people's story in this room. What I feel the Lord doing right now is reversing somebody's testimony in this room. What I feel right now is some of you have known pain and abuse all of your life and, and struggle all of your life. And what I hear the Lord saying is what I'm getting ready to do under this anointing is I'm getting ready to change the trajectory of your life. Yes, I am. I'm getting ready to change and shift the trajectory of your life. Some of you all don't realize that the power to break the curses of poverty is being, listen, it's in your belly. That's why the enemy has tried to kill you and tried to destroy you and tried to take you out of here and look at everything you've been through and you still up in here in the house of God with a worship and a praise and can I tell you something people don't understand that greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world I'm standing here today but it's not me I'm crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ lives in me I'm trying to hold myself together but I feel like identity crisis are being broken right now. Somebody say, who are you? It's in him that I live, move, and have my being. It wasn't me. I, I, got, to, I got to move on from that. I need to leave my notes. Because I just really feel this for somebody in this room. Don't you know that the enemy knows? I want you to come here. The enemy knows everything. That's why you got to be careful with people who always are connected to the folks that know the negative business out there about you. Why does everybody always feel comfortable coming to you talking about me? Let me, let me show you something. Don't you know that the devil works in the realm of the past? So every time you try to move forward, some of y'all don't realize that you are constantly wrestling with past memories of guilt. And some of you all act guilty and you don't even realize you act guilty. You pray guilty, you live guilty, you date guilty. I said you date guilty. Some of you all date guilty. It isn't that you can't do better, it's that you don't feel you deserve better. So you put up with what you put up with because the enemy has talked you out of your identity and authority. The moment you realize that you represent Jesus Christ, you won't just let people talk to you when they can't listen. You won't date anybody. Because if you can't say it to Jesus, you can't say it to me. And let me help some of you all that say, well, you know what? I just, I just, you know, I just feel like everybody I date is an assignment and I just got to work on them and help them get themselves together. You feel like God can't give you anything finished. So every person you date is a project. Uh-oh. I told you I was going there today. Every person you date is a personal project. And the reason why you do that is because you don't think you deserve better. Don't you realize that there was somebody out there that already is who you're trying to make them be? Yes. 
Julie, come here, come here. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. The enemy works through the realm of the past. So how does he keep you in bondage through toxic memories? You'd be amazed how many people lift up their hands in church and they're not worshiping. They're pleading the blood over their mind. Wait a minute. Because some of us in this room are constantly in warfare with the old person we used to be. We are going to tell the truth. Will you tell the truth? Listen, I know you've been saved all day and you're glad, but let's talk about yesterday. I, I want to talk to some real people in here who, who, who can say that it is the blood and the identity of Christ that is constantly keeping me from snatching some wigs off of some of these people. You don't want to be real. It is the blood and the name of Jesus that is keeping me from being on the news. It ain't even that I like you, it's that I love Jesus. Everything from your past would not hold up for you in the court of the realm of the spirit. So technically, if you are real, you don't qualify for the job. Technically, if you are real, based on your eating habits, and your behavioral habits, certain sicknesses should have access to you. Technically, if you honest, certain craziness run in your bloodline. <laughs> Some of you, you come from the bloodline of the wig snatchers. <laughs> it's in your blood how to yoke a good. Some of y'all come from generations of shooters. Generations if I got something in my glove compartment that'll help you. <laughs> Follow me to this car. I'm crazy. I got your crazy in my trunk. Everything in your past says you don't deserve this. You don't qualify for this, and you can't have it. And the truth is, in the natural realm, you really don't. So what he has to do is say, there's nothing in your past that's going to give you this miracle. So what I'm going to do is come down through 40 and two generations. And what I'm going to do is wrap myself in flesh, and I'm going to walk this life and I'm going to reverse everything that the enemy has done in your past in order to give you access to this next level. So this is what he said, this is what I've got to do, is I've got to change your identity in your name. Because if you go in in your name, everything you have done is attached to your name. So he says, for this next level, listen, I hope your neighbor listening, because I'm prophesying over the rest of this year. For this next level, you can't go as yourself. You got to go covered under the blood. And you got to go under the name of Jesus. Now here's the problem when you're covered, you can't see. Because the first thing God has to do is put you in a dark season. Go listen to my message from yesterday. God has to put you in a night season. So the only thing you can do is hear the voice, but you can't see where you're going. Oh, you're not real. Because some of you want to act like you got everything figured out, but the truth is, is you don't even know how you made it to the month of March. It's almost April, and you can't even explain how you made it. So this is, what's, this is what the rest of this year is going to be for you. We walk by faith, and not by, how you going to do it, girl, I don't know. How it's going to happen, can't even tell you that. When you saying God going to bring that business to pass, and I, I don't know. 
All I know is that he tells me to take one step and I get to the next room and somebody gives me an opportunity. He says, take the next step and I get to the next room and somebody else opens up another door. I take the next step. But what's going to happen next? I don't know. All I know is the Lord told me to stand here and he's going to send somebody. And all of a sudden, that's the day you get a cash app. That's the day that somebody calls you. That's the day that somebody said, girl, were you looking for an opportunity? I don't know. But just something in my spirit told me to call you and to let you know that and you don't even qualify it, qualify for it. You don't even know what to do. The only thing you can do is the Holy Ghost say, move forward. Walk forward. Walk forward. Walk forward. I got you. Walk forward. I know you can't see, but walk forward. I want you to walk forward just like this. Just like this. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. All right. I want you to make a left. Make a left. Make a left. And I want you to walk forward. Now, why do I have to cover you? It's because when you get in the room, if they see you, then somebody messy is going to try to come up and spread your business. You're not going to tell the truth. Make a left. Make a left. Somebody messy is going to walk forward and they're going to try to talk about why you don't deserve it and the truth is if you keep it really real you really don't deserve to be blessed and you really don't deserve to have it but because of the Lord's grace and mercies you are not consumed so can I tell you something I'm not coming as myself I'm coming in the name of Jesus and when I show up Jesus has shown up which means watch this if you got to open up the door for Jesus you got to open up the door for me do you not realize that while you sitting in this room right now the Lord is changing your identity do you know that there's about five people in this room and I ain't a lying prophet. There's about five people that are in this room right now that the Lord is saying that over the next two months, they're going to be deleting stuff off your credit and you're not going to be able to figure out how it happened. There's five people in this room that you're going to hear the testimonies that they're going to remove stuff off of your credit. They're going to remove it and all of a sudden your credit score is going to jump up 200 points. Why is it going to happen? Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit says the Lord. Why? Because I walk in the spirit and if I stay in the spirit, make a left. If I stay in the spirit eventually he's gonna get me to where i need to be can i share something with you just because you're blind don't mean you can't see tell your neighbor i have no map but i'm not lost find somebody say i don't have a map but i know i'm not lost because greater is he that's within listen here greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world can i tell you something but the lord said what i'm getting ready to do not only am I going to cover you in the blood, but I want you to watch this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Grab my wrist. With one hand, grab my wrist. Grab my other wrist. Get in front of me, Marshawn, with this mic. The Lord said, I'm going to begin to walk before you. And you afraid to go in, but the Bible said he goes before me, makes the crooked way straight. So that means before I could get in the room, they're not going to see me. They're going to see Jesus. God help me not to tear up this church. The Lord said when you get to the business meeting on Thursday, you're going to walk in the room and they're not going to see you. They're going to see Jesus. They're going to say, I don't know what it is about you, but something about you. I just, you ever had anybody tell you that? I don't know what it is about you, but something about you. I can't explain it, but there's just something on your life. It ain't you. It's Jesus. What they feel is they feel Jesus. And I want to prophesy to a few people and let you know that what's about to happen in this season is the Lord is saying, I'm going to do you just like this. The Lord is saying, grab my hands. I'm going to go in for you. I'm going to go in with you. Every dart that they throw at you, listen here, they're going to have to throw it after me. And listen, he said, not only am I alpha, but I'm omega. First, you get behind her and put your hands on the shoulders. He said, I'm alpha and omega, which means I got your front covered and I got your back covered, which means that even people sneak attacks that are coming against you and trying to stab you in the back in this season the lord said you're not gonna have to worry about anything why because the lord said i'm in front of you and i'm behind you my glory is your rear guard i got news for about a few of you in here expect some apologies from your family expect some people to say i'm sorry because what they're going to have to realize is the one that they tried to kick out is the one that's carrying the deliverance for the bloodline the lord said i'm going to use you to set everybody free I wish everybody in this room that knows uh, that you are not by yourself, uh, that knows that you are not out here alone, but the Lord is in front of me and the Lord is behind me. But reach way down in your belly and give the Lord a shout. Come on, open up your mouth and shout it here. Fire, 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 in the mind, fire upon your life. Fire upon your life. Fire. The Lord said in this season, 
I am reversing every curse against your mind. I am reversing every ill-spoken word. I see the Lord releasing an apartment to you right now. I see the Lord releasing an apartment to you. You went and you were denied, but the Lord said, I'm giving it back to you. Somebody release a shout in here. Take the five people say approved, 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 approved. Approved, 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 approved. Approvals, divine approvals, divine approvals, divine approvals. I got two minutes left. was going to go into a whole history lesson I don't have time because I sense in the in this room that somebody needs an approval quickly I sense in this room that somebody has been under warfare concerning your identity and the enemy's trying to destroy your name babysit what you think about me because in this next season I ain't even coming in my own name so you can try to do whatever you want to do to that one because in this season I'm coming in the name of Jesus and that name has already been crucified buried and resurrected which means that if I'm coming in the name of Jesus I've got the power to survive everything that you throw at me I dare everybody here to open up your mouth start worshiping the Lord come on come on I want to do something really quickly. I'm about to decree some stuff. And the Lord's going to do some quick reversals. Uh -huh. The Lord's about to do some quick reversals in here. I want you to get ready. The Lord's going to do some quick, somebody say a quick reversal. Divine reversal. Are you ready for this? Let me show you how the Lord is going to do this thing. Listen, I'm not a line prophet. over you and to those that receive it by faith expect quick miracles over the next 30 days I'm going to command some doors to be open and I'm not commanding it and hoping God signs off on it I'm saying it in the name of Jesus in the authority of Jesus Thank you, Holy Ghost. Everybody on this side of the room, I want you to stand and lift up your hands. Everybody on these two sides, stretch your hands towards them. I'm going to decree some stuff over y'all. Let me tell you what I sense on this section. I know some of you all are believing God to open up some doors residentially, but what I sense on this section is promotion and approvals concerning businesses. It's going to be rapid and unusual. I decree over everyone from the front to the back 
that the Lord is opening up supernatural doors for your businesses to flourish. There are catering companies over here that have been sitting on hold for years. There are several of you, there's somebody over here, the Lord wants to turn over a complex to you. There is an apartment complex that God is turning over to you right now. I feel that so heavy. I don't know if I've ever seen this before, but the Lord said that as you worship me right now and as this decree is going forth, the favor for this assignment is being loose into your hand. There's someone over here, the Lord is giving you caretakers. There are caretakers that are getting ready to come forth, that are going to work under you. I loose it and I stir it right now by fire. Come on, Zion, I don't hear you pray. I stir it right now by fire and I command wealth upon your businesses, increase upon your businesses, increase, increase, nothing missing, nothing broken. I speak the anointing of Jacob for diligence. I speak the anointing of Nehemiah for building the wall. I speak the anointing of Jeremiah for perseverance. I speak the anointing of Elijah to stand against forces that seek to destroy you and tear you down. I speak the anointing of Abraham, the anointing to even be in an Egypt season and see wealth and see blessing in the midst of famine. I decree the favor of the Lord that when you go to the business meeting, when you go to the city, when you go to the government, you will no longer go in your own name, but you will go in the name of Jesus Christ and the Lord shall go before you and make the crooked ways straight. Grace, favor, promotion, promotion, be open and multiply to you all now in Jesus' name. Everybody on this side, release a worship, release a praise, come on. This left side, I want you to stand, lift up your hands. Everyone stretch your hands towards them. I sense over here, property acquisition, residential increase. The glory of God is on me so heavy. you to enlarge the places of your tent I will increase the place of your tent many of you over here are about to be approved for mortgages grants apartments I loose upon you all favor whoa, for property acquisition in the name of Jesus I loose upon you favor for home ownership in the name of Jesus, I loose upon you grace for increase. I declare approvals for condominiums, apartments. I declare approvals for homes. Be loose to everyone Woo! in this section. Right now, there's a glory coming over here. I command approval, grace, and favor to be loose upon all of you right now in Jesus' name. And in the authority of Jesus Christ, I say approved, 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 approvals, 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 divine approvals, natural approvals, access in the name of Jesus. We decree to be so in Jesus' name. We say, man, everybody over here release a shout by faith. Both sections, stretch your hands towards this middle section. Middle section, lift up your hands. If you're able to stand, I want you to stand. This don't make no, this is weird. <laughs> Some of the stuff God be showing me, y'all be wild, man. sense on this section is many of you are going to have things in your background cleared.
your background, your credit is going to be supernaturally cleared. And the Lord said, over the next 30 days, what you did not get approved for in the past, you're going to go back and try it again. And the Lord said, the second time around, you're going to see that everything has been turned in your favor. I loose a supernatural anointing upon all of you for increase. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I go into your past, into your bloodline, into your credit, your criminal history, and I command your slate to be right clean right now. Some of you made bad spending habits trying to take care of people and you got in the debt being in the wrong relationship. You got in the debt trying to support people that aren't even in your life anymore. And regret and fear has controlled you. But in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I command your slate to be right clean. And I decree and declare that your credit score is coming up now. I declare that your criminal history is non-existent. I declare that even the history on your license is being clear. I decree and declare that court dates are being canceled and the Lord has loosed the judge to give you forgiveness. I declare that when you go, they're going to say case dismissed. We can't find nothing. And I lose this favor, I lose this anointing, and I lose this grace upon you now in Jesus' name. Everybody in this middle section will lose a shout by faith. Listen, before we go, I want everybody to stand on your feet real quick. If, if you can, if you're physically able to, I want you to stand real quick. We are only going to do this for 60 seconds. 60 seconds only. And then I'm going to open the door to the church and I'm going to dismiss. For 60 seconds by faith. Wait before you start that clock. For 60 seconds by faith. The Lord said, I'm going to give this room, listen to me carefully. How you think the Lord be opening up the doors he be opening up for this church? Because of faith principles. Period. Somebody say period. Do you know there are many affirming churches that have not been able to see what God has done for us? That's because this is a house of faith. Somebody said this is a faith house. For 60 seconds, the Lord said, I'm going to give you an open heaven. And so what we're going to do is everybody in here is going to begin to praise God. And your praise is going to open up the gates. As you praise God, he's going to open up the gates and the door. If you will be obedient for 60 seconds. Now listen, this I want to do this. I'm going to shift this down real quick, real quick, real quick. We're going to go into high praise in just a moment. For 60 seconds, listen to me carefully. This is your instruction. Your instruction is to act like somebody just handed you the keys, handed you the approval, just told you, because that is the kind of praise God expects from you. He don't expect a pre-praise and then the real one later. This ain't a down payment. The Lord said, praise me and act like you would act if they called you and said, we're getting ready to send you the check for $1.3 million for your business. Act like investors just pulled you on a phone call and said, we're getting ready to invest in what it is that you're doing. Now, I'm not talking about something I've never experienced. I'm telling you, in the past couple of weeks, I've been on the phone with investors nonstop that have been investing in what we've been doing. That's how we're able to close on the property we're closing on in Chicago. That is how God has been opening up the doors that he's opening up. So for 60 seconds, I need everybody in here 
from the smallest child to the most seasoned adult to act like you got in your hand what you've been feeling in your heart. But I only want you to act like it because you really do got it. Because it's already done in the spirit. At the count of three, I want everybody in here to give God a ridiculous, spontaneous, earth-shaking, planet-shaking, earthquake, Paul and Silas, midnight type of praise. One, two, three. Come on, go for it. Come on. You got 45 seconds while the heavens are open. You got 30 seconds while the heavens are open. You got 15 seconds. While the heavens are open, you got 10 seconds. While the, ha while the, ha while the, ha while the heavens are open. I'm going to open the doors of the church. Dear leaders, we have one that just joined the church. Leaders, you should be down here at the altar. We got one new family member. Come on, make some noise. We got two new family members, make some noise. We got three new family members, make some noise. I'm about to tell something up. Somebody been praying for this one. Somebody been praying for this one. And the Lord's doing a new thing right now. Listen, I feel something in here. Will there be another? I feel like there's somebody else in here that the Lord is after. Today is your day to get plugged into the house. Don't wait another day. Listen, this is season to move quickly. In the last season, I come for three months and then decide if I'm, a, I'm moving quickly in this season. I gotta move quickly in this season. Powerhouse, we got three new family members. Somebody say, Welcome home.
we covenant with you. Listen, I'm about to run with her. We covenant with you to push you into your purpose, to push you into your identity, to push you into your calling, to push you into your next season. We say that today is the beginning of the rest of your life. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life. It's a new season. It's a new day. It's a fresh morning that's coming your way. We declare that the Lord is over shot. We declare that the Lord is opening up doors for you and increasing you. And so we say welcome home. Welcome home. Power House, make some noise in here. Make some noise in here. At this time, Brother Justin is going to take you to the back to show you how to maintain what you've obtained. Y'all, I'm excited. We're getting ready to go. I'm, I'm going to look drunk in the spirit. I want everybody that can to get a prophetic seed to sow. Ashataho, ikatabo, shamandaha. Ayabababasha. Woof. Sorry about that. Fool, you come for me. The Lord is clearing I wanna say anything. the warfare that's been against your mind and your spirit, the heaviness in your heart, even grief is going right now. And the Lord said, I'm healing you. The Lord said, I'm freeing you. God said, I've called you. I prophesy this next season is going to be called peace. Trina, come down here. You We're getting ready to go. You Trina, the Lord said, We're getting ready to go, and this is the last thing we're going to do before we leave. This praise that you need to give. Is going to cover you, you for the next 90 days against every you. attack of death that's going to try to come against you. The Lord said, as you praise me for where I brought you from, I'm going to cover you on your way and the way you're going. The Lord said, release a praise to me right now. And somebody oh, please help her. Because I know what I saw in the spirit. Somebody help her praise the Lord. Somebody help her praise the Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For you done for this me. one is for her mind, for her mind. You done for me. The Lord said, "I'm healing your mind." You the Lord said, "I'm freeing your mind." You the Lord said, "I'm healing your life." I'm doing it again. I'm healing you, Lord. I'm doing it again. We're getting ready to go, standing all over this house. You can grab hands with your neighbor or not, but just give me a favor. Somebody say, Trina, you're covered. Everybody say, Trina, you're covered. Trina, you're covered. Trina, you're covered. I said that you're covered. I said that you're covered. Oh, you're covered. I said that you're covered. You are covered. 
I tell you that you're covered. You are you covered, 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 you 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 covered, because in this season, we're not going in our own name. We're going in the name of Jesus. We thank you that the past is over and that we've been washed under the blood. We glorify you, Lord, because we're not going to spend our days depressed. We're not going to spend our days heavy. We're not going to spend our days meditating over the past. But we thank you, Lord, that we're in a new season. We thank you, Lord, that we're under a new grace. And we thank you, Lord, that we got the victory and the devil can't do nothing about it. So, God, as we leave this place with never your presence, hide us behind the cross and have your way. We bless you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that all is well because you are in control. In Jesus' name, I have that agree. Say it is so. It is so. And so it is. On your way out, I want you to point to three people and say, You're covered. You're covered. You're covered. Watch us live on Wednesday from Chicago. You're covered. You're covered.